Let's talk to Danny Shaw, crime, justice and policing commentator, uh, because yesterday uh, there were pol uh, nine people arrested, 34 dispersal orders were issued on London's Oxford Street uh, because there was a sort of ram raid of people who decided, thanks to a, a video on TikTok, they should all get together uh, and uh, go and rob a few shops. According to Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, she said this, we cannot allow the kind of lawlessness seen in some American cities to come to the streets of the UK. The police have my full backing to do whatever necessary to ensure public order. Those responsible must be hunted down and locked up. I expect nothing less from the Met Police and have requested a full incident report. Let's talk to Danny Shaw now, uh, crime, justice and policing commentator, uh, to get the latest from him. Danny, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. N nice to be on your yeah, show. Yeah, nice to see you. I mean, this is a bit of an import from the United States of America. We were hearing from sort of quite early doors yesterday that there was trouble expected um, in Oxford Street because the police, I suppose, intelligence units had detected some social media activity uh, that seemed to be calling for this kind of thing to happen. Um, it doesn't seem right that, that social media should be allowed to be used as a platform for this kind of organisation, does it? No, and the social media companies have got a massive responsibility uh, to stop that sort of message from getting out where it's inciting people to commit criminal acts. Yeah. Uh, I think the message was first on Snapchat, then it was shared on TikTok. Um, I'm not so sure, Mike, if this is an American import. I mean, a year ago uh, in August last year, we saw some similar scenes mm. on Oxford Street, I think an American candy store. Yeah. Um, I think there was some trouble there. And if you go back um, to 2011, um, and you remember that summer, that week of um, major disturbances and riots in, mm. in town cities across England, uh, London particularly was really badly hit, sparked by a, a protest um, after the fatal police shooting of Mark Duggan. Um, I am hoping that we're not going to see sort of uh, copycat attempts from what mm. we saw yesterday or see this spread to other um, uh, areas because that is the real fear is that people will see this on social media, they'll see the footage and they'll think mm, that's not a bad idea, it's a nice hot afternoon, uh, no one's at school or college uh, so there are a lot of young people with a lot of time on their hands. Mm and some of them uh, with uh, sadly sort of the wrong sorts of motives and intentions might sort of try to um, try to embark on something we saw yesterday. I really hope that doesn't happen because I, I don't know about you, Mike, but those few days in 2011 were some of the scariest that I can remember because it felt like the country was almost on the brink of anarchy because the, the rioting and disturbances were out of control yeah. and were moving from one uh, city centre to another. Uh, and the police really couldn't catch up. But as ever, though, they were run by criminal enterprise. They were not run by people who wanted to fight back against the police or to fight back against what they thought was their drown-trodden lives because the government wasn't looking after them. In the end, they just wanted a free pair of sneakers and a new TV. And as a result of that, they had no kind of cu currency with anarchy, really, because they were simply robbing places. Yes, I mean, there was a whole mix of things that went into that and caused it. But in the end, yeah, it was a lot of people who just felt that they could take advantage yeah. because there seemed to be no police presence at all. Mm. Uh, they weren't anarchists. They weren't seeking to overthrow the government. Uh, but there was a sense of anarchy and that, that the police just couldn't marshal uh, enough people to be on the streets to stop it or to or to get ahead of it. Now, what's encouraging about this is that it looks like the police were on social media, they were aware of what happened and they were there yeah. on Oxford Street in numbers and perhaps that they've learned uh, that they've got to get ahead of this before it happens. Yeah. They've also issued um, the dispersal orders for people who don't know what they are. This is where the police can sort of designate a particular zone uh, that's, you know, that they're worried that there's going to be trouble and they can issue notices to certain people they identify in that zone and if they go into that area, they will be in breach of that and they can be prosecuted. Yeah. So it looks like they're sort of getting ahead of it and using the powers at their disposal, which is a good thing. But the concern is it's lovely hot weather out there. And we all know that in summer holidays, um, you know, hot weather, uh, kids and young people with not very much to do, a, a sense of anger perhaps about the authorities and about the cost of living crisis, all those things can mix together and lead to some, some of the things we saw yesterday. Yeah. I mean, surely there is also some form of uh, responsibility that should be held by the social media companies, you know, whether it's Snapchat, whether it's um, TikTok. You know, if they're allowing their platforms to be used for crimes to be planned, surely that is a crime in itself, isn't it? 
I absolutely agree with you. Uh, and they have a responsibility. Look, they can't monitor every single social media post, the millions and millions of posts. But where something is drawn to their attention, you would have hoped that they have a unit, they have teams that would take that down straight away um, and that potentially identify the people who, who put that post online. Um, I note that, that amongst the seven arrests were two arrests uh, in Essex uh, that may be significant, that may be something to do with the people who were uh, who were planning uh, what happened yesterday. And it's really quick police action, which is vital. Um, you know, what we saw um, in 2011 was that the courts acted really quickly. I don't even remember, Mike, they were working round the clock. Mm. Once people had been arrested, they were sitting at, you know, late night, I think they were even weekend sittings, to get the, the, the ringleaders in particular and other people who'd taken part processed through the courts quickly to send out the message. Uh, to you know, you will be caught and you will be punished immediately. There's mm. going to be no stringing this out for months and months and months. And so I think if that you know if that happens from what we saw yesterday, I think that will be a very important thing yeah. as well. And we've also seen in, in sort of weeks leading up to this, uh, to some extent, Danny, an outbreak of shoplifting. You know, we've had shops complaining that more and more people are, are, are stealing from them. We had the co-op saying that they've got one shop in London that's been literally looted three times a day. You know, there is a problem with with you know, the, the visibility, if you like, of police, the visibility perhaps of security guards, even of staff in many shops, and these kids are just doing what they want to do because they can get away with it, aren't they? There is certainly an element of that, and I think, um, you know, look, uh, I've, I've said before that some of shoplifting is, is due to people who just don't have enough uh, uh, money to buy the I things don't believe they, that. They I really don't believe that. It, I don't believe well, I that at some all. Of it is, some of it is due to that, and some of it is due to uh, people no. who have... People, but generally, no, problems. generally, people, Daddy, who haven't got enough money to afford to eat, will find a way to find things that they can eat, that they can afford. You know, we don't have people starving in this country. People who are stealing things from shops are criminals. It's as simple as that. They're not doing it because they're forced into it. You know, people were poor in the twenties. People were poor in the thirties. People have been poor in this country over historical periods of time. They haven't resorted to stealing because they had a moral compass. Not everyone might, but there are some people who are very poor and poverty does lead to crime. And there have been major pieces of research didn't used to. that, as does, as does addiction, as does dr drug addiction. People who are attempting to feed their addiction have to steal in order to sell the goods and so on. Uh, and people who have alcohol problems. That's well, not I'm sorry, that's criminal activity. We shouldn't, well, you shouldn't be condoning it. You shouldn't be saying, oh, that's all right then. I'm not saying it's all right. I didn't say it's all right. I'm not condoning it. I'm trying to give you some explanations. And what I'm saying is... Well, I'll tell you is, what. I'll, I'll ask you a question, it, right? I'll ask you a question. Of all of those people in Oxford Street yesterday, how many of them were doing it because they were starving hungry? No, I didn't. I would say I didn't none. Say that. that was... No, I didn't say that, Mike. You're, you're trying to twist what no, I said. I'm not twisting it. I'm just saying that none of those people are anything other than criminals. Sorry. I, I agree with you. People who are losing shops in Oxford Street and embarking on disorder um, need to be punished and they need to be pun punished yeah. quickly. And, and, and people, and people who, who are shoplifting, clear. and, and we, were told, we were also told that the vast majority of the people who are shoplifting are criminal gangs who are doing it to make money. OK, I, I don't think there's anyone has done a definitive piece of research to say the vast majority are criminal gangs. There are criminal gangs who are clearly involved in shoplifting um, there are other people who are shoplifting for other reasons due to their personal circumstances. That's not an excuse. Apologies for that. That's not an excuse, uh, but it's, a, it's an explanation as to, as to why that sometimes happens. And so it's important not to generalise, uh, but to say that the shops themselves need to do more. Some of the shops make big profits. And they can certainly do more to put some of the some of those profits into security, CCTV, and so on. Well, they do. Uh, I mean, there is CCTV and, and everywhere, but it's not working. The, yeah, because the shops that I feel very sorry for are the other small convenience stores, the independent uh, retailers that don't have uh, those sorts of resources, and they do need more support from the police. Um, and we do need to see more of a presence on the police. And now we've got the numbers back to where they were in 2010 before they were cut by the Conservative government. Uh, now it will be hoped that the police can put those numbers... Uh, uh, well, I think the police did a pretty good job yesterday, don't you? Sorry, Mark. I think, I, the police, I think the police did a pretty good job yesterday. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it looks like, as I said, they were there before. Uh, they were acting on the intelligence. They'd obviously been looking at the social media accounts and they were there in, in a presence, a visible presence. And hopefully that will send out a message uh, as it as wasn't sent out in 2011, that the police will be there and will stop this from, from uh, repeating itself. Because my concern is that other people will look at that and think, oh, I'll, I'll have a go. I'll do that in whatever town or city it is. Yeah the country well like you say i mean in america it started happening because it was decriminalized and people went oh we can get away with this and so then they did it so the more that it's made to be criminalized the less likely it is going to happen but danny listen we're out of time thanks very much indeed danny shaw there um i think you forgot he wasn't working for the bbc for a second